So you might be saying, Squib, what's wrong with your lizard? Is he sick? Is he injured? No, this is pretty normal. He's shedding. They do this. So what can you do to help with the shedding process? Well, I'll show you. So what I use for soaking a Euromastix is a small container that you can buy at pretty much any department store, hardware store, home improvement store. I just use one that's big enough for a pair of shoes. And all I do, run the water until it's um, a little bit warmer than lukewarm. And put some in the bottom. Now you don't want it boiling hot, but these lizards are used to really high temperatures. So you're trying not to not to scald them. That's a little bit. We can, we can run it a little bit warmer. So hot, but not scalding hot. You don't need to put too much in there. Fill it less than halfway. Yeah, that's a little bit warmer. So, there's a lot of uh, pet care books that say that you don't want to peel the loose skin off. I have never, he's hissing, he's not happy. He's puffed up. You see, he's he's making himself look bigger. He's, he's not going to bite me or anything, but he does not like this right now. A lot of times he's... Um, He's real docile, but um, anyhow, some of the pet care books say that you don't want to peel off the scales. I have never had an issue with this. However, if it doesn't peel off nice and easy, like this is kind of stuck, I'll just tear it off and let it work its way off. See how easy that comes off? Just got to be nice and gentle. If you've got to force it, stop. So... And there are uh, little crevices under his arms, by his tail, sit still, Gus, um, that uh, it's, it's really hard to get this, the, uh, the old scales off. What they do is they rub against rocks and things like that. Now, in nature, uh, they burrow, and when they're underground, uh, it's cooler in there, there's more moisture in there, and that will actually soak into their scales and help them to shed but since uh he doesn't get to uh to dig more than uh a few inches in his uh terranium there what what i'll do periodically is i'll just soak him in the water now i've got the lid here and that's so he doesn't jump out and run away it's not airtight he's not going to suffocate in there and you can see well, if I can get it in frame, maybe, that his head is above the water. You see, I didn't put very much water in there. It's just enough for him to get wet and let it soak in, especially on his underside where uh, it's a little bit harder to, to peel off uh, the uh, old scales. So I let him set and soak for about 10 minutes. So there he is in there. He's perfectly fine. If you're not comfortable with using the lid, you can just hold on to him because he can climb out and run away. The thing about these desert lizards, they're used to really high temperatures, temperatures we don't get here in Michigan. If he gets away, he's going to crawl underneath something and hide and he's going to pass out. Once it drops below 80 degrees, he goes unconscious, and uh, it's just a matter of flipping over everything until you find him. Uh, over time, I've figured out some of the best ways to uh, make their, their habitat where they've got enough room to move around and can do some of the things that they can do in, in, in nature and uh, still make it where it's really difficult for them to escape. And I think he just left us a present because he's not happy. <laughs> But this isn't the first time he's got soaked. So, after multiple technical difficulties with the camera and tripod, uh, it's time to get Gus out of there. So, 
He's not going to be too happy. He's going to hiss. He's still puffing up. So in nature, what they'll do is they'll crawl in between rocks and puff up their body so that they stick in there in, in such a way that you can't pull them out. Because that's what birds will try to do is they'll try to try to pull them out. And if they have to, they'll drop their tail, which isn't healthy for them, but they can survive it. They'll grow a new tail, but it'll never be as good as the one they were born with. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, they'll drop their tail, uh, and it'll uh, it'll move around, and that'll distract the bird, and the bird will take off with the tail, and the lizard will survive, and that sort of thing. They 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 may puff themselves up to look a little bit bigger too. I don't know. For some people, he looks menacing. And uh, this tail, if they're sleeping and their tail's sticking out, and you go tap their tail, they will hit you with this tail, and it it uh, it won't it won't cause any injury, but uh, it'll definitely get your attention. Um, uh, for a bird, um, I suppose it would be very painful. And you might see around his nose, he's got a little crusty right there. That's kind of his equivalent of sweat. Sometimes I'll clear it uh, around his nose. He doesn't like that, but it builds up there. So, But that's really about it. Just take a rag. Make sure you dry him off. He's making all kinds of sounds. <laughs> he wants to go back. So we're going to put him back now. So, Thanks for uh, getting volunteered there, Gus. And that's how you soak your lizard.